Remember, the YouTube ads feed the ducks. <laughs>Good morning, everybody. It's October 30th of the Duck Adventure, and this is a little different start than normal. But I've been uh, I've been up really early today. I've been cleaning the freezer out uh, yesterday. Actually, I was, I was actually rearranging all the freezers because uh, we're getting ready for the call here, and I didn't even realize it. But um, I had some more bags of duck feet. So, Doug, I've already cooked these up once before for Doug, and they're okay. just basically they're well, they are they're just duck feet. And what I do is I put them in the oven at 350 uh, on the rack here and I bake them for uh, about 40 minutes. Um, and then I let them cool off and I freeze them in a freezer bag and Doug gets them as a treat. And as you can tell, Doug's very interested. He loves them. Uh, he won't eat them raw. Rocco uh, would eat them raw. Doug won't eat them raw. Actually, we all know, well, I've, men I've mentioned it many times, Doug won't eat raw duck. I have to cook it for him. Which is a good thing because then he won't be feeding himself out there in the bush. The Dougie's on R&R, &R. he's still in the house. He's hating life right now, actually. Just hating it, he's up. He's very upset with me. So, that's the last of the duck feet from last year, uh, because I, I kept all the feet, and this year I'm gonna try to keep as much as I can. I'm gonna be really tight on freezer space, because as we know, I got 1,200 duck feet out there, and there's just no way I can keep 1,200 duck feet. I'll keep enough for Doug, and uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, I don't have. Uh, my friends don't want it. I've talked to them, and uh, they won't feed their dogs. They said, "Oh, they think it's disgusting." But anyways, uh, some people, you know, they've got a thing uh, on what their animals can eat, and they don't just, just they just don't understand what you know dogs can eat and what they will like to eat. So, and Doug really loves these. I give them to him, and it's like serious treat. So, but let's go out and uh, do the ducks, uh, the rush. Uh, they're excited, and uh, I've got a lot of stuff set up already. But I got more setting up to do today. So let's get outside. Well, wouldn't you know it, eh? <laughs> I haven't used the pivot heads in three days, and usually I have them plugged in in the charger on the laptop, and uh, I just put them on, put them on battery stone dead. So I think my battery's got a memory problem on them. Um, but I'm gonna go do uh, the, the recon here. Um, the ducks are seriously wound out. It's a really cool morning. It, it actually was at zero all night. So uh, there's a little bit of ice on the deck. Probably, uh, it's, it's we're, not probably, we got a really nasty cold front come blowing in here, uh, uh, nasty weather actually starting tomorrow. So the call might not happen tomorrow because it's really, the weather that they're forecasting for tomorrow is just absolutely brutal. And then on Saturday, uh, actually starting on Saturday, it's starting to change again. And we're going back to like plus 10 degree days again uh, by Monday. So who knows what's gonna happen here this weekend as far as the call's concerned. Um, it's, uh, I, it, well, I looked at the weather and I thought, you know, why freeze in you know, a snowstorm during the call? Uh, when, you know, if you wait a couple days, uh, we're going to have like 10, 11 degrees a day. So, I don't know what's going to happen yet on the call, but I am getting set up. I, uh, yeah, look at these guys. There, they want out bad. Yes, ducks, I'm coming. I'm going to go, uh, I got to get this happening here. The ducks are going nuts. So, yesterday I got the fire pit all dug out. I end up, uh. I, it was a bigger job, and thankfully I had my uh, my buddy's tractor here because I, there was a rock that's been in the bottom of my fire pit that just drives me nuts every time I clean it out, and I dug it out. So I, uh, I, I basically what I did was I lined the whole bottom of the uh, I had found a whole bunch of flat rocks they're about six inches uh, thick, and I lined the whole bottom of the fire pit now so that my pit uh, actually has a bottom to it. So got the pot on there. It uh, it's. It's uh, actually the steel bar. Uh, that steel bar actually cost 40 bucks to buy it. It was crazy, uh, the price of uh, scrap steel. But it isn't going to bend. This year, last year, I had a bending problem because it got so hot for so long. That that run, like, look at the size of this thing. It weighs like 40 some odd pounds, or 55 pounds, that rod. So it's uh, it's not going to bend this year. So Because there's 200 gallons, uh, or 200 pounds of water that's sitting in there. It's 100 quarts. So that's a lot of weight. So it's, that's that's where we're gonna scald. I got uh, today. I gotta finish off my uh, my compound for the the call gate. Uh, I've got a couple ideas. I'm gonna fine tune it, make it a little easier for my buddy to uh, grab the ducks for me. Um, I got sharp sharpen knives up. I gotta sharp my axe up. I got a lot of little like they're all little jobs. So, but uh, I'll get them done today, and we'll see what the weather's gonna be like. Today is supposed to be gorgeous. Uh, five degrees Celsius, but no clouds. So it's gonna be actually nice. All right, I'm gonna go do a recon here, the ducks. I'm irritate the crap out of them here, standing here talking to you guys. They want out bad. 
And last night they ate five bags of feet again. They're just pounding the food back. There's a little. Alright, I'm gonna do recon and hopefully nothing happens because I don't have a camera to capture it. Well, people, you're not going to believe this. I, I, I don't believe it, actually. Um, I went down to do recon. I was just set the fireworks up, and I was about to let them go. And I look up at the lake, and you wouldn't believe what was in that, at the mouth of the creek, waiting for the ducks. I, I couldn't believe it. I, I backed, uh, I, I ran back. I didn't set the fireworks off. And I went, I ran as fast as I could, actually, uh, down to the dock. What a day for the pivot heads have a dead battery. It was crazy what was going on down there. Wait till you see this. Um... Just wait till you see what was waiting down there. I, I couldn't believe what I saw. It, it, it's, it's like now I know why the ducks, when they're out on the water, why they would just all of a sudden freak out and come back to shore. I, I saw it. it. It's, well, you wait till you see this. Okay, people, I, uh, <laughs> I don't believe what I saw this morning. Oh, I'm on the dock here. Um, this, is, uh, this, is the, the, this is an invisible duck killer. This is the worst kind of uh, duck killer you want to have uh, show up because you don't know what's happening. Look at this. Otters coming in, feeding on my ducks, and they were waiting exactly where the ducks come out. But I, I just want to show you guys, look at this. Look at this for nasty teeth. Look at that. Look at those teeth. They would make short work. They were out here waiting for the ducks. I came out when I was this morning and they were right there, right where the, the, the grass is coming out of the water there. That's where they were waiting, three of them. And they were just sitting there so quiet. And I looked up out of the creek and I could see these three little bobs out of the water. And I said, okay, they're not ducks. I thought, you know, maybe they were birds. And I watched and I watched and they were like just sitting there so quiet and they kept, their heads kept going down under the water. And I was like, they're waiting for the ducks. So this is why when the ducks were out on the water out there and they would just all of a sudden freak and come back is these things were under the water swimming up to them grabbing ducks. I'm just wondering how many ducks I've lost to these guys and there's three of them. I, uh, I got shots off at all three and they were pretty good shots uh, but they, they were just, it, I, with buckshot you know you only got eight pellets so chances are two of them never even got hit. This guy got seriously hit. I, I nailed his head real. Well, actually, I got his neck really good. Probably hit him with about four pellets. He died instantly, actually. He flipped backwards when I hit him. But uh, that is uh, the silent, uh, invisible duck killer right there. That's the worst thing you can have happen here. Because they'll uh, basically, I wouldn't doubt they've been feeding here the whole time. This is going to really uh, increase the numbers of loss. Just unbelievable. And the pivot heads, of course, you know, they have to, you know, not be working today. It was crazy. I was just, I was firing rounds like nuts down here. Unbelievable, man. The duck, this is, you know, and the call starts now. You know, we're doing the call here, uh, well, hopefully, probably not tomorrow the way the weather's looking, but um, Mother Nature just keeps sending people to the, or, not people, keep sending critters to the, uh, the duck buffet here. Well, I got down here. Actually, here they are. Oh, I thought I was quicker. <laughs> I wasn't. All right, let's get, some, get a good shot here for you guys. Look at this. Here they come. We're way behind today. It's about uh, oh, it's about eight thirty. No, oh, I want to wait till the sun comes up a little higher today because of uh, it, this could be the last nice morning for the big rush. Oh God! Oh, now the wind's turning the boat around. Oh boy, this is not working out. Oh, the seat's really cold in my bum. <laughs> Sorry about the bad camera there, guys. I, I brought a towel to sit down on, but everything is frozen. Even though it, uh, you know, it was like one degree Celsius last night, they um, uh, everything's frozen. I think it was actually a little colder than that. Oh, I'm doing terrible camera work here today. And the boat keeps turning. Ah. 
All right, I got to stand up for you guys here. This is uh really sorry about this bad work here, guys. All right. I should have just done this in the first place. With the wind, yeah, there was no wind when I came down here first. Another crazy morning on the Duck Adventure. They're not coming down in a horde this morning. It's uh. I'm just looking here in the back. And it looks like a dribble. Come on, guys. Well, now we know why the ducks were freaking out when they were out in the lake and they would just come whipping buck, you know, from the middle of the water as they were getting hunted from below by the otters. Oh, they're coming right up to me here. Oh, there comes another horse. I'm actually a little overdressed here, or I should say, I got a little bit of sweat running back and forth from the yard to the bush here. Oh, I don't believe this. These guys are swimming right up to me. Okay, it's like they're coming to me for security. What another beautiful morning, not a cloud in the sky. They say it's only supposed to go to five degrees today, uh, but I think it's going a little warmer. There must be a whole bunch of the back of the uh, the mud. Come on guys, do some underwater uh, fishing for us while you're close. Give us a shot before you get this all muddy and we can't see anything. Oh, no. We're diving uh, underneath to get the minnows. I wonder how many ducks we lost to the otters. Three otters is uh, they can make a dent in the ducks. Minimum a, a duck a day. Minimum. They might be the mud stragglers coming up here now.
have no problem with me now. In the boat, they're all around me here. It's supposed to warm up next week. I was looking at the forecast for uh, actually uh, Sunday is the last cold day and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday it's supposed to be like 10 degrees, 11 degrees. So as long as it doesn't get too cold at night and nothing freezes, uh, you know, too thick, the yeah, 10 degree days, uh, you know, she'll warm up and uh, it'll, we'll still have a fluid lake here and the ducks will can still come down what's left of them after the call. Well, I should say, the call is going to be an ongoing thing here for probably about, I figure it's going to take us probably about 10 days in total. Beautiful morning. Oh, Miss Kobe, we just missed her. That she flew all the way from the yard. I got my back towards them because I'm watching the ducks here on the lake, and they're still straggling down here. Oh, there's a Muscovy. Okay, there's got to be more. That's only two so far. Come on, Muscovy, I'm waiting for you. I'm ready. Oh, another one, but it, uh, it's only a short burst. Oh, here's some more coming. Oh, they're all landing back at the creek. Come on, give us a flyby. You know, the one thing with the ducks, you know, you get those, uh, you know, those cool video shots, you know, with a brief, you know, like 10, 13 seconds of, of uh, awesomeness. And it only happens, it seems, once. It's either you catch it right then, you know, like that one time they flew right by, the Muscovy flew by me in the boat. I got her, you know, and actually stayed in focus, and it was actually a really a cool shot to uh, catch her at that close flying by you. But it just won't happen again. It's sort of like, you know, the, the tree, you know, I cut all the branches on the tree, set up the ladder to get the, uh, you know, an awesome shot, you know, going and coming from the lake, and I've only uh, gotten one of each. One awesome shot going to the lake and one awesome shot coming home. Since then, they haven't done the horde. They haven't done anything. They just, you know, like even last night, they dribbled home last night. They're animals. They don't cooperate. I'm trying to watch the uh, the air or the air the uh, skyline here for a Muscovy flying, and trying to keep the action in the middle of the screen. I'm not doing a very good job here this morning. Yeah, I don't think the Muscovies uh, are going to fly for us here. We're wasting our time waiting for them. So right there is where the uh, the um, otters were waiting for the ducks. And that's why when the ducks go out there in a big group and they just, uh, we're out here, you know, the other mornings, and they just take off in a big, you know, freak out, come back to shore, it's right there. They're swimming underwater, and they're uh, getting the ducks. And it was just a fluke this morning when I came down and I saw them out here. I think it's because I was late today, because I was waiting for the sun to get up. Is the only reason I caught it. If I would have been early like I normally am, uh, you know, they would have had another snack today. Now 
I was just trying to catch a uh, another you know epic morning here on the lake before uh, you know we start the call and, and you know and take advantage of this blue sky and the sun. If it wasn't for that, uh, it would have been another dirty day. I would have lost some ducks and not even known it. And I would, it would probably continue, and I would just keep losing ducks. Well, the ducks don't seem to have a problem with me uh, in the boat. And they're right beside me. Oh, a little bit of duck action. Okay, I don't see Goose Lee anywhere. Actually, I don't hear Goose Lee anywhere. Okay, guys, I'm worried here. I don't, uh, I'm trying to think, did I even see Goose Lee last night? I was working in the yard, I thought for sure I saw him last night coming in the yard. I'm 99% sure last night when I was digging the fire pit I saw Goose Lee. But I do not see him down here this morning. Oh, there he is. Oh, I was getting worried. I thought, oh, no. Okay, where are you? You see, you're right in front of me there. Pretty soon, you know, the duck or the geese, you know, geese take a longer to mature, so, you know, as far as they're flying, they might not start, we might not see any decent air until January, you know, December, January, until they get a little stronger. They're not, they don't grow near as fast as ducks do. They also live a lot longer, too. But, you know, this morning's predator action uh, explains why the ducks don't go on to, uh, this side of the lake, you know, is that's where the otters were coming from. You know, the chances are the otters are living back there in the bush, and uh, that's the direction they come to hunt. And that's why the ducks are on this side all the time. Poor ducks. Well, Mother Nature's really taken its toll on us this year. I'm just wondering, you know, uh, what the final call is here. The count. You know, the wolves, uh, you know, coyotes, foxes, owls. 
You name it, we got it coming here to eat. But they're uh, they're really enjoying themselves this morning. Just look at that. They're really having fun. I just can't believe the amount of feed they're pounding back. It's nuts. They're uh, they're like they're they're down here eating all day, and they're coming home, and they're not hungry when they come home because there's been no feeding frenzies the last four days. None. They've been totally calm. Actually, they're not even going into the pen uh, to you know to check the feeder out. But in the morning, strip clean. You know, we must... Oh, that's a, I thought it was goose leaf, but it wasn't. There must not be any uh, predator action in days down here for this many ducks to be hanging around the creek. Well, they, they seem to be more interested uh, in the open water this morning. But it is cold because I my feet right now. I'm just wearing regular rubber boots, and uh, they're uh, they got a good chill going on right now, guys. It's it's brisk out. It's really nice and sunny, but it's not warm. Actually, I was looking at the weather forecast next week. There's actually a couple nights that it's only supposed to go down to like 8 degrees at night. Which is really warm for November. here it's they're uh, they're just having too much fun Oh, the wind's picking up now. Oh, that's cold. <laughs> cold, damp wind.
Well, this is a, you know, a, a fitting morning for a nice morning rush. Nice and sunny. Before the really dirty weather kicks in this weekend. Well guys, I'm gonna go and have my breakfast. I've got a serious hunger on. And uh, I got a lot of little jobs again today. Uh, I got a lot done yesterday, but today's the, the final setup. I gotta get completely set up um, and, and, and ready to go, just in case the, you know, the weather doesn't get nasty uh, like it's supposed to. But if it gets nasty, like they're saying, I, I'm not gonna cull when I know I've got some really nice weather coming on Saturday. Uh, you know, Saturday, Sunday, it's actually not bad, but you know, Monday, Tuesday, it's really nice weather, so. I'm, uh, I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'm, I, I don't want to do the color in a snowstorm. Did that last year. So, and I don't have to do it this year if the weather's going to get nice next week. So, I'm going to go have my breakfast. And uh, if anything happens this afternoon while I'm working, I'll turn the camera back on for you guys. Okay, people, I'm on the other side of the lake. I was just about to leave and I looked up and the other two otters uh, were, are, were swimming on the other side of the lake, coming towards the ducks again as I was going to the dock. So I'm, uh, I'm sitting over here on the other side of the lake waiting for them to uh, appear again. And hopefully I can get them uh, because they were heading directly right for the flock and actually the flock took off to the shoreline. They're all, uh, they're actually hugging the uh, shoreline right now. So these guys are coming back to hunt. Well everyone, I, I, this is a curveball I didn't anticipate today. The ducks now are freaked out. They've gone back up the creek. Um, the, and I, I was just pulling the boat in here. I look up and I saw a flash of black uh, coming out of the water. So the, uh, the, the otters are back here hunting the ducks and all the ducks. Now they're just starting to come back out here right now, uh, out to the water. But there's some, he's out there. There's two of them. And they're, uh, they're really close because the ducks keep, you see they're going back again. They won't, they won't stay out in the water. So, it is somewhere here. I've been standing here for about a, about a half an hour so far. And uh, I, like I said, I caught that one flash of its back coming out of the water, but I haven't caught anything else. So I'm like way behind today, of course, because of this. But we've got, uh, you know, they're, they're definitely into your feet. And the fact that, you know, I was over there on the far side of the lake when I, uh, I actually got two shots off at them, um, but they were like, they, de they dove so fast into the water. Um, and shotguns are just terrible once the pellets hit the water. They don't go, there's no penetration power. It's not like a rifle. So, but they're back and the ducks are freaked out and actually they're all up the creek. So, oh man, otters. Never would have thought that. I, I never even dawned on me uh, that they'd be the next thing on my list of uh, problems here. So, all right, well, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna sit here a little longer and see if I can uh, spot the little bugger and. I can't even, uh, I take the boat out and the problem is the, uh, the waves are hitting the side of the boat and it's making noises, uh, the aluminum, and uh, you know, you can't uh, sit there silently. So the only place I can sit silent is sitting here on the dock and, and just hopefully, I'm just looking around like it's, and the sun's, the direction the, the ducks are in, the sun is uh, like right in my eyes, so it makes it even more challenging. The ducks are coming out a little bit here. They're not, I'm trying to stay back off the dock. But they're, uh, they're not too gung-ho about being on the water today. So these otters must have just moved in here. Yeah, the last, I'd say probably the last two weeks they probably just got here. All right, I'm gonna keep hunting a little longer. Well, what a waste of a morning here. I've, uh, I've been out here for about an hour and a half here. Uh, there's two more otters that are hunting the ducks. The ducks are all now uh, hiding back there in the bulrushes, which I personally think is the stupidest place to be with uh, otters you know, roaming through the, uh, the bulrushes here. But what's happening here is I went over there with the boat and I, of course I didn't have the, the camera because I actually, I've got my 22 and the shotgun. So I'm like, I got two uh, weapons. Uh, on me here uh, because the range it seems every time I see them they're uh, they're just out of range of the shotgun but right over there and that's the area the ducks keep freaking out about when they were out in the water swimming they would rush back to this side of the lake well over there there's a whole bunch of packed down uh, grass like it's, it's a big actually there's like it looks like about three different uh, uh, kill sites yeah, all in one area there they've got it all packed down so 
they've been hunting the ducks and then taking them over there and eating them. So there's uh, there is two more on the prowl here. Um, the, as you can see, like none of the ducks are out in the water here. And I've sat here patiently. Uh, I've actually I was hidden uh, in the boat here, um, and no signs. And I even went out in the water again and hid on the other side. Uh, there's just no sign of them. They're, they know I'm here. And you know, I, like I said, I went and got the 22 because uh, they, they were just kept. You know, they, they were kept. They're staying at about the 200 foot mark away from me. Um, you know, with the shotgun, it's like that's just a, a you know a, a, a you know <laughs> a prayer type shot. So. Um, it's like it, it's they're uh, they're here so i'm gonna uh i'm gonna come down again this afternoon i keep looking like you know like i'm gonna see their backs or something come out of the water um but the ducks now are hiding over there so well and the, the weather's right it now is blowing in nasty it's just nasty uh cold the temperatures dropped so i got a hunch tomorrow's gonna be a, a bad day uh like they say it's gonna be and if it is uh i don't think we're not i'm not doing the color on a bad day i'm gonna wait till it gets uh like i said you know next week we got some nice weather coming so uh like sunday actually the weather's gonna change again so um but this is uh so we're gonna you know if i don't get these things we're gonna lose some ducks uh you know to the to the otters man i don't believe this I've never seen otters on this lake. And I've been on this lake, uh, you know, uh, I've been coming on this lake for years with my boat and I've never seen otters on this lake. So they discovered the duck buffet. Well, I, I made a call to the uh, Ministry of Natural Resources local enforcement office, office and I talked to actually a conservation officer uh, concerning this, uh, this new predator problem. I've got the, uh, the, um, uh, the otters. And uh, I talked to actually I talked to two different officers. Uh, one has never heard of uh, you know otters uh, bothering ducks, but then again he was mostly referring to wild ducks. But the other conservation officer uh, he knew that uh, when it comes to domestic ducks that uh, otters are uh, they won't pass up an easy meal. And the fact that uh, there's three of them here, um, you know, and the fact that I saw you know I found the kill sites, found where they're hiding out. Uh, you know, and, and the fact that they were waiting for me this morning just shows that they, you know, they've been hunting the ducks. And right now I just went out to the, uh, the dock. My pivot heads are completely stone dead. I think the battery's completely gone in them. So, uh, I went down there with the pivot heads on to show you guys, but the ducks are absolutely freaked out. They won't go out in the water and actually they're all hanging around in the creek and the back area they're, uh, hiding. Uh, the ducks are freaked out. I went down with the 22, sat there on the dock, and uh, to see if I could see any action. Um, you know, the, the 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 they're there. You know, the otters are still in the water. They're you know they're harassing the ducks, uh, but the ducks are you know they're hiding. So, um, but I want to give you guys a shot here. It's a beautiful. It's really a shame because it's quite a beautiful creature, but it's you know it's killing ducks, um, and there's two more out there. But they've got a wicked set of teeth on them. I'll just give you a shot here. Like if you take a look here. You know, the, they, they can make a mess. Actually, the conservation officer told me that, uh, you know, they're, uh, <laughs> they, they, they have a pretty good appetite. So, unfortunately, it's too early in the season for the hide because, you know, we're just coming out of summer right now. So they haven't got their winter coat yet. So it's, uh, you know, if this was, you know, another, another month and a half, that coat would actually be worth some money. Uh, that animal right there would actually be worth something. But he's too, the, the coat on him is so thin. He's, uh, it's really, really thin fur right now. Uh, actually, you can see the skin through, you know, there, it's not very thick right now. He's, uh, but, you know, <laughs> unbelievable though. You know, I thought, you know, we, uh, we, you know, got rid of the coyote and, you know, the, that, that predator problem was gone and, you know, this morning and then watching the ducks freak out when the, when, the, you know, the otters were swimming around, uh, you know, they're, they're getting, uh, chased. And then finding, you know, going across the lake and finding where the otters are getting in and out of the water and where they're hiding and finding feathers there, you know, like they're a kill site. So, you know, they're grabbing ducks and they're eating ducks. So I have no idea, you know, the last couple of weeks, you know, it might even be longer, you know, for all I know. But I haven't seen, you know, the ducks freak out, you know, until the last couple of weeks, you know, when we were out in the, out in the boat and they would be out in the water fishing and we'd be sitting there watching them and then they just up and freaking come back. That just started as far as I know the last couple of weeks. So I think these otters just moved in here because I've been here since 95. I've never seen, the only thing I've ever seen in that lake uh, is beaver and, and muskrat. That's it. Never seen an otter, uh, you know, because there isn't any fish in the lake and otters need fish 
or ducks that are easy to pick on, which my ducks are really easy to pick on because they're not wild ducks, they can't get away. You know, wild duck can just up and fly away, uh, which an otter, you know, can't do anything about. But, you know, my ducks, you know, all they can do is fly or swim really fast. And an otter, he's a really fast swimmer. They get underwater and uh, that's why the ducks, you know, they were going over on that side of the lake and they just freak out and come back, freak out and come back. And that was why, you know, uh, our answer this morning and, and the fact that I was down there and I, you know, saw it all happen and all getting set up to take place. And, you know, and then later in the day, you know, or later in the morning, the ducks, you know, freaking out because the otters were, st otters were still there hunting the ducks. It's just a, a, a curveball. I, I, I haven't gotten near as much work done today getting set up. Um, and the call, we can't do it tomorrow because we got a, just a crazy storm blowing in. It's going to be wet and snow. Actually, they're just north of me, 60 kilometers north. They're saying that anywhere from 15 to 20 centimeters of snow, that's like anywhere from 6 to 10 inches of snow, uh, just 60 kilometers north of me. So who knows? We might get it. We might not because Ottawa, uh, which is usually the type of weather we get, uh, you know, this time of year in the wintertime, we're getting more like Petawawa weather, which is north of us, uh, where the snow is uh, tomorrow. But, you know, who knows what we're going to get tomorrow. We're going to wake up and it's going to be a surprise here. So I'm going to get my chores done and I gotta, I'm got going to work on the, uh, the, the gate here and get the, uh, the culling uh, compound set up. And I still got to get things set up here today. Well, I, I thought I've seen everything here. I'm on the back deck uh, washing stuff, getting ready for the cull here. Uh, washing pails and all that kind of neat stuff, getting things cleaned up. So we're just uh, hit the ground and going here. And uh, <laughs> we've got a, uh, an immature pigeon. Now, I don't know where it hatched because it can barely fly. Um, and this thing is freaking the ducks out. It's actually got Doug all freaked out too. He's uh, being like all over it, smelling it. But uh, it can only fly about 20 feet at a time. But it was actually chasing Mo for a while there. Mo was losing his uh, marbles because the uh, <laughs> the duck uh, just couldn't handle this little tiny bird. But it's followed it uh, all over the yard. It's been in the mud. It's uh, been down at the swamp. It's and uh, Doug went over there and it spooked it. And it flew towards the ducks and just freaked the ducks right out. But it's not very old. It's not going to last the winter. It doesn't have uh, much feathers. It's still got its fluff, actually. It's a really small pigeon. I have no idea where this thing could have uh, hatched, uh, where the nest would have been, because uh, it can barely fly. Unless it was flying 20 feet at a time coming here, but... Doug doesn't know what it is. He's gone over to it quite a few times and smelled it. And the pigeon just lets him. I said, okay. And Doug, uh, well, he's, oh, the chickens are going to attack it. There, I think it's on the other side here. Yeah, there it is. Little immature thing. It's not very old. I remember when I first moved here, the property was infested with these things. Oh, Doug. Doug just spooked it. Doug, what are you doing? Doug doesn't know what to think of it. He keeps uh, chasing it, but he doesn't... Uh, he stops about a foot away from it. It's not a very good flyer. Oh, yeah. It's going into the, into the shed. Okay, uh, the pigeon flew into the building here. I don't know, uh, Doug was in there. I don't know, I hope he didn't hurt it. He hasn't shown any aggression towards us. He's just really curious. Oh, it's hiding in the corner. Look at this poor little thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like seriously screwed up bird. No, it's in here. Oh, not flying out. It's really good at flying in and out of buildings, I can tell you that much. <laughs> Leave it alone. Alright, Doug. Doug! Leave the bird alone. There. Come on! Doug, come! Come on! I know, it's a flying bird and they really bother you. Come on! Oh, you shouldn't be running. Doug, stop. Stop it. No running, okay? 
Doug found a whole bunch of poop and he's rolled in it. It's just covered in excrement all over his back. I'm gonna have to give him a shower. I had to let him out. He was going crazy whining in the house and jumping up in the door. And so I thought, oh, what the hell, let him out. Well, I hope the ducks don't make me wait too long up here. I want to show you guys something here. This is uh, this is something that they haven't done ever before. I'm, I'm actually, I'm outside work. I'm setting up the, uh, the, uh, the culling gate for them. I'm automating it a little, I'm not automating, streamlining it. But uh, I, got, I can't believe it. This is where the ducks have spent the whole day. Look at this. They, uh, they have not left this area, except for some of them have gone around the back side, but they're right where the coyote was hunting them. So there can't be a coyote around, but there's definitely otters out in the water that are attacking them because they're hanging around. This is where they're hanging around now. It looks like almost the whole flock's in there. So I think the otters just moved in. For them to start doing this, it's the only thing that makes any sense. You know, they, uh, they've never done this. You know, they're not out in the lake. They, this afternoon, I've gone down twice down to the uh, uh, dock. Actually, I went down to the dock to see if I could, you know, get a shot off of the otters if they're back. I think they're, uh, they're morning hunting. So tomorrow morning, uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm going down there uh, with the rifle, not the shotgun, so I can get a little longer shot at them. Because if that's what they're doing to the ducks, uh, you know, because the ducks, like I said, they, they, I, this afternoon, I couldn't believe it. Doug was, uh, you know, all excited about down in the swamp, and I went and looked, and that's where they were, down here. You know, they, uh, they were out in the water early this morning when I was out there, but as soon as I left the lake, they, uh, they went back up the creek. Which I you know, don't understand. I you know, I would have thought you know the otter, no matter what, he'd go up the creek after them. But otters, I mean, there's two more. I I saw a total of three. So I, honestly, I can't believe I didn't hit them all. The amount of shots I took today. But shooting you know anything in the water with a shotgun is uh, it's almost it's almost futile unless you can get like a direct hit, like a direct, like really close because uh, you know the pellets hit the water enough. You know the spread. You just don't get the uh, the tight grouping. You know for the the you know the firepower. The you know the punch. Sorry about that, guys. I'm uh, I'm not I haven't been on the ladder in so long. I'm a little bit uh, unsure of my uh, positioning here. Well, let's start it here. We're gonna get a, we're gonna get a, a rush home here. But I know the otters really screwed up my day. I wasted uh, the whole morning down there, like the whole morning. And then I went down twice this afternoon. You know, I'm supposed to be getting ready here for the call and you know, I'm screwing around with predators again. And the thing is, I gotta get the predators because uh, you know, I'm still gonna have breeding ducks after the call's done. And you know, if the lake's not frozen and the breeding ducks go down there and I start losing breeding ducks, that's really gonna screw me up because I'm only planning on keeping, you know, roughly about 40, maybe 50, more like around the 40 ducks and the, and the six geese, you know. I'm not gonna keep 80 birds like I did last winter. That was a little too much for the uh, the barn and the pen and everything. It just it was just it just made it a little too uh, stressful. So, and I'm not keeping any uh, ruined males. I'm just gonna keep females. I'm gonna crossbreed them. They're doing a dribble. They must know I'm up here. Look at this. They're doing a long row, long uh, path. Ducks in a row. Come on, guys. It's about uh, quarter after four.
So we've got a cold weekend ahead of us, and then it's going to warm up next week. I think it's going to be a long dribble home tonight, guys. This is crazy. They're really taking their time here. It's almost, I'll show you here, it looks like there's a traffic jam getting out of the water. It's actually, you know, it's a beautiful night for fall. There's you know, barely any breeze. But it was supposed to be a nice day, except you know the clouds came in and they weren't uh, they weren't forecasted. But which I think that's part of the big storm that's going to hit us here. These guys out there are taking their time about thinking of coming home. So if you think about this, you know, that, that area right there, you know, where they were hanging around, it's, uh, you know, that's the spot they always were afraid of all summer. You know, that was the spot they were getting attacked all the time by the coyote. And uh, they, now with the otters attacking them out on the lake, this is where they're, you know, they feel they're safer. Poor ducks. They've had a rough go of it. Oh, goose leaf. I was worried I couldn't find him this morning. I was like, oh no, that would suck if we lost Goose Lee. This is what you call a duck train. Long, slow duck train. Wow, there is a lot of ducks still out there. I can't believe how they're hanging in the creek like this. Well, now I know what I'm dealing with out there on the lake. I'm going to be out there bright and early tomorrow morning, even if it's nasty, dirty weather, because I know they're going to be waiting for the ducks again, just like they were this morning. But like I, like I said, you know, I called Ministry of Natural Resources and talked to a uh, conservation officer, and uh, one had never heard of them uh, doing ducks in, and the other one had, so... I never would have thought, you know, otters would be doing ducks though. But you know, when I found the other side of the lake there, all that packed down grass, uh, you know, and in the kill sites, you know, you can see where they had eaten the, the ducks. Well, it tore them to shreds. Um, I wondered how many they've taken on me. Well, we're gonna find out soon here. This is ridiculous how they're coming home tonight. They're like, it's like they're just dribbling. They're so cute with their heads wobbling.
So I'm wondering, Mr. Gimp, you know, the hurt Drake, if uh, he got eaten by the otters. Because, you know, we haven't seen, we, you know, I thought I saw him, but then, I, you know, I'm not too sure if it was a male or a female that came out of the pen with the limp this morning. I never got a really good look uh, again after I saw it come through the gate there. They must be coming around from the other side of the uh, swamp where they were hiding the back section. And there's no way all those ducks were at the mouth of, of the uh, creek. Last night we had some Scobies fly home, so maybe we'll get some flying action here. I know one thing, the pen's getting dirty uh, much faster. I actually gave it a partial spray down near the uh, the, uh, the water today because uh, I couldn't believe it. It's, well, they're in the pen like about 13 hours now. The night, the days are getting shorter, and it's a big difference, you know, from uh, nine hours to thirteen hours. The amount of uh, feces they drop in that extra four hours is is, is substantial. There's some scobies hanging right at the back. Maybe they're gonna fly at the end for us. One single Muscovy sitting back there. I'm getting, I got my finger on the, the zoom out button just in case she decides to fly. She's looking around. Like she's thinking about it. Come on girl, give us a show. Come on. Right on. I knew she was gonna fly. Almost perfect. I had a hard time swinging the camera around and keeping her in the center of the uh, the picture here with the uh, on the on the on this ladder. I was not too happy with that. I almost kept her in the center the whole uh, time. That's pretty good though. So a new predator on the duck adventure. I'm thinking we're gonna go through the whole gamut of predators here. But I think the only thing left not, that we haven't ran into is a bear. Knock on some wood. Oh, I was lucky I got the wood close. Uh, I don't want to run into the bear. I don't have big enough ammunition on the, uh, the shotgun. 
And even if I had slugs in my pocket, it'd be uh, it'd be hard hard pressed to uh, do an ammo swap while you're getting chased by a bear. Or you turn around and there's the bear. Alright, that's a rush home. Well, I wouldn't call it a rush. They came home. That's what we'll call it. That's the ducks coming home. They didn't seem to be in that big of a rush. But they uh, they certainly were screwed up today. Like I said uh, earlier, I couldn't believe it. They, they the whole afternoon in the creek. Um, I, 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 I you know the, obviously the, uh, the you know the otters were just, otters were just you know harassing the crap out of them. Go oh, well, I know I saw them there, and I you know I, I couldn't get a, they were just a little too far to get a shot off. They were on the other side there, and I went back and got the twenty two, and uh, you know I never saw them again. So tomorrow morning we'll take another shot down there, and you know pardon the pun, and we'll see what we can do. Oh, there's Cripple Duck. Man, yeah, that duck is... It's like just, she walks with the, the legs. It's, it's bizarre the way she walks. Poor little cripple dog. Alright, I'm gonna go and get back to work. They're not even that hungry. Uh, there's actually, there's only maybe about 20 ducks at the feeder. They're, uh, they just came back to be home. Because I'll uh, show you the feeder here. Like, there's, there's next to no ducks in here. You know, there's maybe five on each side. It's not a frenzy, that's for sure. But then again, you know, they're, they're pounding back five bags of feet a night, so they're leaving here with a full belly in the morning. They're gonna have some nice sized livers on them, natural foie, foie gras. You know, because duck's liver uh, does get bigger uh, in the fall when they pound back the drain like this. You know, they get fatty livers, so. I'm gonna have an awful lot of liver. Because that's the, uh, I'm hard, all the liver I'm getting, I'm keeping separate. Because, um, well, my buddy actually, yeah, actually he, he put dibs on a whole bunch of liver too. <laughs> going to be a lot of duck liver uh, this year, and it's going to be good. Because Ivy and I, like I said, I've been giving them five bags of feed uh, every night here for the last week. Uh, and there's going to be like probably another four or five days here, the way the weather's going. So they're, uh, you know, they're, they, some of them will probably end up having about 12 days of, you know, excess grain. So their livers should be nice and big, and naturally, you know, they're, they're gorging themselves. I'm not doing it to them. So, which I've, you know, I've uh, watched videos on YouTube of people um, who do foie gras naturally. Where you know in the fall, the only time they have it is in the fall. Oh, Muskogee just flew in. I don't know where Muskogee came from. Where, oh, Peaky was just trying to mimic the uh, Muskogee. Um, back to the natural foie gras. Um, I've I've seen where people have farms that do it naturally, and they only have it in the fall because that's the only time the duck will gorge on grain and corn uh, because it's just instinct for them to eat a lot to you know to pack on the, the fat. So uh, this is, I'm going to have some, I think a lot of good livers. The sun's just coming out again, I think so. It's not supposed to. Well, actually, it's just breaking up partially. Tomorrow, I wonder what tomorrow's going to be like here. Uh, they're calling for some really dirty weather, so. But I'm slowly getting things set up. I'm going to get back to work here, guys. I'd love to just, uh, you know, waste a bunch of time with the ducks because, you know, time is running out for them. But I've got to go make the apparatus that's going to take their time away. Unfortunately. 
This is the part I hate. You know, I really hate the end of the season. You know, I, I do this all year, and you know, we uh, all summer, and you know, the, the ducks are—they become part of my life, and you know, and then I got to do this. And that's why I've been putting it off and putting it off, and you know, hoping for the Mercer report, and uh, I mean, thinking of every excuse possible, but I got to do it now. I got no choice. The weather—you know—I'm getting a break on the weather next week, and I got to—you know, like it or not, I got to do it. It's—it's uh, it's got to happen. As much as it sucks, and trust me, it sucks. Well, Colin, this is, uh, the, I finally finished the, uh, the, the uh, uh, I guess we call it the culling gate, or culling pen uh, to uh, get the ducks sorted out. Um, modified what you and I initially set up. What I've done is I've put a, uh, a small enclosure at the end here um, uh, that's two feet high that the ducks can't jump over. But this way I can, when I open the gate up, and down at this end here, I'll serve the, I'll serve the right end. Um, these uh, two four-foot panels, at the end, I just used uh, fencing wire here to make the hinge, and I've got a clip, uh, just a clip to hold it together. But these uh, gates swing open and fill the uh, the gap on that side, on this side. So then I open this uh, the big gate, fill this chute full of ducks, then close the big gate behind it. Um, then I've got the ducks trapped in here, um, in this uh, spot here, which I figure probably a hundred ducks are going to be sitting in here. Uh, 70 to 100, uh, just a rough count. That's going to be the holding pen for them uh, to one, do the sort to figure out, uh, you know, breeding ducks, the geese, you know, they'll be uh, let go. Uh, but everybody else, you know, with a tag and without a tag is going to get culled. So now uh, inside here, um, I didn't want to chase them inside here. And I got thinking to myself, you know, how, you know, plus with these bars, these crossbars here that I've got as support to hold this whole, uh, you know, contraption I've made uh, steady, it would be just impossible to chase them. So I thought, you know, I'll make a way that, you know, I just, uh, you know, get, you know, like six, seven, maybe uh, eight of them at a time to go into this section, close this gate behind. It's got a bungee cord there to hold it. Um, and then there, that way you've got, you know, like eight, eight, ten ducks in there. They're sitting in there, you know, all you have to do is reach in, grab them by the neck, and no chasing, no freaking out. Uh, it's just going to be a lot calmer. I, I learned a lot from last year. Um, and, you know, by doing this way, there's no chasing. Uh, you know, you come in here, you just stand calm, and we already know with ducks, you know, you just have to stand and they'll avoid you. And, you know, they'll just go over there. When enough ducks go in there, you'll walk over, close the gate, and, uh, and then proceed to, uh, you know, uh, do you do the job you know uh, sorting them and uh, you know deciding who lives who doesn't depending on you know on the tags on the legs um, it's it's I think it's it's it's, a, it's slick a lot slicker than last year last year you know I had the, the you know the FEMA camp set up there uh, and then chasing them with a net can't chase ducks with nets you can but you can't it, it's just it, it's a lot of stress they freak out and it's just uh, then you got to calm them down you gotta hold them, and you know, and you gotta, and you gotta calm them down enough so that they will lay in front of the log, uh, you know, while your hands over their eyes, and you know, you uh, take the axe and decapitate them, uh, because you know, you want them calm, you don't want them freaking out. Uh, then you know, that just defeats the whole purpose of the duck adventure. Is freaking out ducks just you know before they die. So, um, this is the the way I figure I've got it is going to be the calmest. Now, what I'm going to do is I got I got I've got a banner. Which I'm going to cover on this side. It's just a, a two foot diameter or two foot high banner. I'm going to put a drape it across here tomorrow, um, and then that way, you know, they're in there. They don't see what's going on, and it's uh, you know as much uh, you know hidden as as possible from what their eyes, you know, what they what they're going to see. So uh, I'm going to try it. You guys all, you know, a lot of my viewers have said, you know, that you know they know. I disagree. I think, you know, they don't have a clue after uh, what I've seen, you know, uh, I've seen them this year, you know, down there playing, you know, in the water with their friend getting eaten right beside them and, you know, they don't care. So, I honestly don't think they have a clue that, uh, what's going on. Uh, you know, as long as they're not getting chased, as long as they're not panicking, not, as long as there's no stress, uh, you know, they're, they're, to them, it's just another day, you know. But they're... Uh, they came back and there, there still hasn't been a feeder frenzy. Like, like there's not a duck. Well, there's one single duck at the feeder. That's it. Yeah, one. I think it's a Muscovy, actually. Let me just take a look here. It looks like it's got a. It's dirty. Yeah, it is. It's a Muscovy male. They're not even interested in the feeder. 
So they must have had a good snack today at the lake. Even though, you know, they were, you know, tormented and locked at the, uh, you know, the creek because of the otter, uh, you know, the otters today, so. Alright guys, I'm going to go and start my supper. It's going to be dark here in about uh, 20 minutes. And I'm actually beat, so tomorrow I'm building the uh, the dryer for the carcasses uh, after we after I gut them, which I'll show you that, which I, you know, I, I'm not going to lie, I, I got the idea off of... Uh, a video I think it was uh, Texas poultry uh, 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 bags uh, which by the way they never answered one single email that I sent them asking about buying 700 bags off of. but anyways I guess business is really good for them yeah all right I'm, I'm done for the night <laughs>